Hey all, welcome to Shadrick. This is Raj here. Friends, it helped me a lot taking a day off and walking my dogs in the park. I think I found out why I was burned out and overwhelmed. But that's a topic for another day and uh, I'm planning to stay motivated and productive. So that said, uh, today I want to share my thoughts uh, with you about an existential problem, not only for genomic companies, but also for patients and governments. And that is the cost aspect and what the industry might end up doing. So I have speculated on a few things because there isn't much literature out there on uh, cost of uh, genomic drugs and on pricing of genomic drugs. Uh, but uh, here are my thoughts. And uh, I hope that you would also share yours. Uh, what I say here has a bearing on most of the companies we have in our watch list that plan to monetize their gene therapy sooner or later. That said, let's get started. Welcome back, friends. When we go shopping to buy something, uh, we look at the cost, quality, and delivery time. Say you are buying a washer-dryer combo. You check them out and compare the cost, service, reputation, quality, and when it will be installed in your home. This drives the decision. And as quality and delivery time improves, uh, typically cost also increases, and uh, we, all, we give it a premium. And we are in a market economy in a uh, case of white goods where there are tremendous economies of scale. And I think white goods have reached a level of sophistication in managing their supply chain and their costs, and they operate on a slimmer margin. There is high level of functionality constantly improving a leap from just simple programming to be able to, to being able to access the appliance over uh, Bluetooth or using apps. For example, the latest um, uh, washer dryer combos, they come with their own apps. And um, those kind of things definitely make a lot of difference in terms of quality. And uh, quality is one way of competing for the consumer dollars. And um, the as the quality keeps on improving, inc improving, the table stakes of what is the basic uh, set of functionalities and performance characteristics uh, acceptable for a given product category keeps on increasing further. And uh, the companies are still able to deliver all these and uh, stay afloat and continue to differentiate themselves from the competitor. Um, and in case of white goods industry, the answer lies in the way they handle their production and supply chains. They source components in the cost, uh, cost effective economies and assemble in low cost jurisdiction or where they can get huge subsidies from the government. For example, once in every three years or four years, uh, the big auto manufacturer, one of the big auto ma manufacturers threatens to close the uh, car plants in Canada and the government gives them a few billion dollars to retain the jobs. So that's one way of making sure that in a high cost jurisdiction you can still manufacture and keep your costs down. But ultimately the money is coming from the taxpayers. What I'm saying is that white goods, computers, cars, iPhones, etc. are highly evolved production processes and uh, that take advantage of cost or arbitrage and economies of scale and manage to grow their business. Now they have perfected all this and are building in redundancy and captivity. These are two new concepts that I want to talk about. Here's an example of built in redundancy. Earlier, if you had bought a dishwasher, it would last a lifetime. Now you need to replace them on an average every five years uh, because they may get uh, repaired and costs of repairs are as much as the uh, potentially the cost of buying a, a newer model with uh, more features and functionalities. And an example of captivity is when you make uh, the mistake of uh, storing your data in the cloud and your passwords in an app. After that, you are captive to the platform. Uh, they have gone into this monthly revenue pattern and it becomes part of your monthly budget. So for example, earlier you used to buy Microsoft Windows and Microsoft Office copies and then you would get uh, upgrades until uh, they came up with a major version change or a product change. Now you can only get these products as a monthly uh, cloud fees and then you're good to go. Uh, same is the case with antivirus as well. For example, BMW is testing a monthly subscription for heated seats. So basically that is heated seats in the car. But to enable that, they're going to take a monthly subscription. So that's, uh, that's uh, going on. So... Uh, 
all these companies are in the leading edge of cost control and uh, price optimization and uh, still getting hold of increasing consumer base and also competing with their competitors. Now let us look at the pharma industry. Pharma has been doing well with molecule drugs under the current paradigm of medicines, which is treating the symptoms and they have patent prote protection and they reinvent a new use for the same drug as the drug is very close to uh, the end of its patent period. And this activity is called drug repositioning or drug repurposing. This strategy involves identifying new therapeutic behavior or indication or application for an existing drug uh, that was initially developed for a different purpose. By finding a new use for the drug, uh, the pharmaceutical company can extend its market life and potentially generate additional revenue. Drug repositioning can be a cost-effective way to bring new uh, treatments to market because the safety profile and some of the clinical data for the drug may already be established at the FDA. These new patents are, uh, or exclusivity rights are often referred to as secondary or method of use patents and they can provide the company with a period of exclusivity for, a, for the newly discovered use uh, separate from the original patent protection. Now, some may say this is a cheaper way of bringing a new drug into the market. Uh, the others may argue that a pharmaceutical company, knowing that there is an additional use for the drug, is not going to disclose it up front, but it is going to do it closer to the end of the patent, and therefore this whole process delays uh, the new uh, usage from being released to the patients. So the coin has two sides. You have to decide w which is which. But as genomic investors, our concern is on the ability of our company uh, to not only recover the costs of uh, creating the therapy, but also generating profit, which can be paid back to us in dividends, as well as reinvested in form of new therapies that will continue to give us dividends going forward. So that's the reason why I'm dwelling into this topic today, and I want your, your feedback as well in the comments, some ideas from you, so that we can visualize how our investments will fare in the long run. Then we have this concept of uh, generics that kick in once the original pay, uh, patent expires. I have always discussed the issues involved with generics, even though the price falls uh, sharply when generics are introduced. I don't think in the end uh, most drugs would be able to survive the low margins that uh, uh, accrue to generics because too many are competing for the same market. So I'll skip that here for now. Genomic medicine is at the early stages and has to quickly design and implement best practices to bring down the cost of production of these therapies. A quick look at the horizon shows that most gene therapies that are approved and are already in the market can cost upward of 150,000 per dose. This is the average price I'm talking about. Right now, the justification to the patient for this high price is that this is less than or equal to their lifetime drug cost plus cost of pain and inconvenience that they have avoided by using the gene therapy. However, this argument cannot sustain the genomic uh, medicine economy in the long run. Autologous therapies are one type of medicine that will have to act fast or else it will not make the cut in the long run. However, autologous therapies can get a slightly longer runway by borrowing some constructs from other kinds of businesses. For example, in an autologous therapy, patient cells are to be harvested, processed and reinfused. Is it possible to franchise the harvesting and reinfusing operations and earn a royalty from that uh, process? Next comes the processing part, where the actual gene editing and quality control takes place. Is it possible to near source this to companies geared to do only this task and who, uh, who price their services based on a committed annual volume? I'm not saying this will happen, but just brainstorming. So this can create specialized uh, franchisees uh, who would be doing the actual uh, gene editing, quality control, and dose production of autologous therapy closer to the franchisees who are doing the infusion and the extraction. Uh, in the world of ERP, there are implementation consulting companies. Their job is just to implement the software and make the system go live at client locations. Is it possible to come up with an implementation consulting model for therapies? Uh, the way I visualize such organization is that they will have experts in each aspect of uh, producing uh, gene therapies, uh, manufacturing gene therapies, and will have devices that will allow them uh, to follow the manual 
and uh, manufacture uh, to the specs uh, from the manufacturer for a given therapy. And they will sign non-disclosure agreement and non-compete uh, agreements uh, so that they can have that facility. And multiple of these organizations with, may compete with each other in order to uh, deliver the therapy. Uh, will they need to get certified by FDA? I guess yes. Uh, their labs will have to be certified for GMPs. And will there be a new type of GMP that can be certified by FDA? Um, I think it is quite possible. Uh, is it viable at all or uh, will this increase the cost? I don't know, but I'm just brainstorming on these ideas. And uh, also when these kind of uh, consulting organizations take up these uh, activities, they have a lesser number of staff and their overheads are also lower, so their cost of manufacturing is lesser, they are more agile. And they may uh, manufacture multiple therapies using the same infrastructure, and they may have separate teams to uh, work on different therapies. So all those possibilities are still there based on the software model that I have seen with the ERP consulting. Now, if you look at autologous therapies, autologous therapies have a built-in disadvantage caused due to the logistics of harvesting patient cells, whereas allogenic, on the other hand, do not suffer from uh, that kind of a problem, but it still has to improve its economies of uh, manufacturing and reduce the cost of uh, production of uh, allogenic therapies. In a recent presentation, um, BMS, that is Bristol Myers Squibb, uh, said it was using computational science, including artificial intelligence and machine learning, to develop uh, uh, chimeric antigen uh, receptor pr production process that have shortened uh, turnaround time and also lowered the failure rates. So that's what they are working on. How can software be used to optimize this process is something that most of the uh, autologous and uh, uh, allergenic um, uh, uh, gene therapy manufacturers will have to think about, not only in terms of while they are going through the clinical trial and doing a discovery, but also after post-discovery in terms of using it for the production process. And where are the areas where costs can be cut without compromising lead time and quality? These are critical questions to be answered. The fact remains that even in G7 economies, there are only so many patients and payees who can afford upfront payment of 150K on an average uh, or more for once and done cure. If the companies do not address this issue, uh, there will be a social divide and uh, politicians will have to step in with legislations and the outcome may not be um, uh, optimal. We have had encouraging reports from Chimera, uh, which turned out to be a blockbuster drug. We have uh, positive reports from Bluebird on the performance of Zinteglo and Skysona. I have spoken at length in earlier videos about pricing strategy, so I'll avoid that here. But the success of Zinteglo is also due to the conditional money-back guarantee that enabled payers to take the risk. Can FDA reduce the cost of its uh, approval process? FDA is already doing a lot in the orphan drug space and with its uh, fast-track designation program. I do not want to believe that uh, the future of medicine will be uh, gene therapies for the effluent and symptom management uh, standard for uh, standard of care for the rest of the population. I, I think uh, uh, no government or society will accept that. And as we have invested in genomic companies and we should know that the cost of production of these therapies are on an average around 1 million to 2 million per dose as per ICER. Cell and gene therapies cost much more because production, handling, and controlling these uh, cell or viral vectors uh, required to make them is far more complicated than working with the chemicals used to uh, make traditional pharmaceuticals and even biopharmaceuticals. So as genomic investors, we have to be uh, looking at uh, our investments and looking at those companies and looking for signs that the uh, CEOs are looking at cost control and uh, improving the manufacturing process efficiency so that if the costs are less, then they can be more competitive in the market and address a larger swathe of patients and um, avoid the risk of going generic earlier. Another fact is that uh, gene therapy targets uh, indications that are difficult and the patient population is much smaller uh, than the traditional drug target, which means the traditional pharmaceutical medicine is addressing a large volume of patients, so therefore they have volume of scales. This means lower production volumes for gene therapies would make it a bit difficult to harness economies of scale. A very interesting trend I have noticed in Big Pharma recently is that some of them have tied up with Ginkgo Bio for 
fermentation based api production api stands for active pharmaceutical ingredients and uh, the foundry method from uh, ginkgo uh, seems to be environment friendly inexpensive and fast so while gene therapies are still grappling with costs traditional pharma is still working on reducing cost of production even further there is deep asymmetry in the situation here between traditional pharma and gene therapies uh, even if we assume that gene therapies are once and done there are lots of gene therapies which are just antibodies uh, which are going to be given to patients on a recurring basis uh, i'm not considering them uh, in in my discussion out here i'm talking about once and done therapies like the ones we have for sickle cell disease unfortunately there is very little literature on this topic about uh, reducing the cost of production but i am sure many uh, genomic company ceos are grappling with this uh, problem because if only 20% of addressable market can afford the therapy then there is a very compulsive need to do whatever is possible to address the remaining 80% Uh, it would not be easy if the cost of production was not so high um, if the cost of production was low then the ceos can uh, easily bring down the selling price while still keeping in mind uh, dividends and profitability and reinvestment potential however right now the way it is is that the cost themselves are very high so right now the first order of business would be to reduce the cost of uh, manufacturing of gene therapies so that uh, the business becomes more viable my hope is that apart from borrowing cost control concepts from other industries as gene therapies become more uh, mainstream there will be possibilities to obtain cheaper and more productive equipment uh, for example genomic sequencers are already leading this trend there could be cheaper uh, consumables and reagents which are common for many gene therapies and if there is some kind of copying technology Uh, then allergenic therapies such as uh, uh, could probably uh, use those uh, kind of technologies to reduce costs i'll give you an example uh, i'm thinking of something uh, like uh, the master disc record which was uh, used to press out uh, vinyl copies so in the days of the vinyl turntables uh, vinyl records were manufactured in mass but there was a metal uh, master copy which had all those grooves and they were used to press the vinyl and uh, throw out a record so that reduced the cost of creating uh, vinyl records so if some technology like that is possible so that we have a master gene therapy available allogenic and then that can be uh, multiplied uh, very easily using that copying process so as a genomics shareholder do you think cost is a genuine concern and uh, if so Uh, please uh, let me know what you think about my ideas out here and if you have any original ideas of your own or if you have read something somewhere on this issue please put that in the comment section let's have a healthy discussion on this uh, i will stop now and in the next uh, part of this video i'll be talking about another solution uh, taken from another industry for this problem it's a very interesting concept and uh, it will set your minds thinking so i'll get back to you with the next video very soon bye for now